Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about everything that you need to know about how it's happening in here in the city of Missoula. It is time for the Big Side Documentary Film Festival. Um, there's a lot of documentaries coming out. Uh, tonight is the premiere night. I'll have a little bit more of information on that later on in the show for events and more. Um, I got some city council. We're going to get an update on seeing where are we at exactly in terms of the transition from Mountain Water Company to Missoula Water uh, or Missoula City of Water. I'm not entirely sure, but it's the Missoula's... Um, eminent domain, proceedings, blah, 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 all that stuff, because it usually takes about 18 months before such a huge amount of um, a company gets transferred to another company, just in general. Um, but yeah, so there's still a lot of le uh, litigation that they're still going through, and I'll have that. And we're talking about uh, crime victim advocates today in public safety and health. So there's a lot to talk about, but let's talk about the one thing that um, is always a good conversational starter, weather. So uh, it is 25 degrees outside. You're going to have a high of 35, a low of 25. There's that winter advisory warning. So there is snow likely to happen today and tonight. Saturday, you're going to have even more snow and rain mixtures with highs of 36 lows in the 20s pretty much all weekend long. But then by Sunday, you can expect your low to be as low as 3 degrees and your high to be 14 degrees just in time for Washington's birthday. So yeah, you get to enjoy some um, winter storm weather this whole weekend. So you might not want to be a uh, want to go out on the slopes maybe today maybe today would be the perfect day to do it and this is from on the snow Dot com. So from on the snow com, you get to check out Mount uh, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort. It looks like they had 17 inches in the last 72 hours and 3 inches in the last 24 hours. Um, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area had a lot of fresh powder as much as Whitefish. Um, Big Sky Resort doesn't have any fresh powder in the last 24 hours, but it did have 10 inches in the last 72 hours. Snow Bowl, 3 inches in the last 72 hours. Most of this will probably change by the end of today uh, as we are getting all that uh, w uh, wintry weather happening through the city of Missoula. Bridger Bowl, 5 inches. Um, lost Trail had three inches. Um, Discovery, three inches. Great Divide, 11. Uh, Showdown Montana had five inches. Uh, Maverick didn't have anything. Red Lodge had five inches in the last 72 hours. And the, you can get this information and more through the National Weather Service and also on the snow.com. So let's kick things off and let's talk about some news. Um, Tis the season for the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. It is February and it is after Valentine's Day. So nothing says love. And um, as they kick off with tonight with a uh, Missoulian uh, posted an article about a documentary that's uh, catching some um, track I in the political spectrum about a campaign spending in Montana called Dark Money. Helena native Kim Reed spent the last six years going back and forth between New York and Montana to follow the election story that sprouted when Dark Money delves into Montana history with the passage of the 1912 Corrupt Policy uh, Practices Act, then moves to Citizens United and ends with the passage of a stronger state law and a civil case against the state senator for coordinating with the those groups. So the movie premieres tonight at the Wilma Theater at 7 p.m. They'll be playing it at multiple venues and multiple times because it seems to be like one of those uh, documentaries that the Big Sky Film Festival is all about. So you can check out uh, those listings and more documentaries for BigSkyFilmFest.org for more information and more. And if you're good, they'll even talk about the Berkeley Pit. Um, state news, um, net neutrality is here, but um, Montana Governor Steve Bulk is requiring all businesses related to the, this field follow the guidelines of an open internet for all. So like any old hip old person related to young Stevie Bullock decided to host a Reddit Q&A session. Um, Bullock writes in one of the questions, in repealing net neutrality, the FCC tried to preempt states from passing their own regulations. In Montana, under the executive order, we aren't regulating the companies, we are simply acting as consumers, saying that if internet providers want to contract with the state, they can't violate net neutrality principles for the state contracts or any other Montanan. So back in January, Bullock made announcement to companies after July 1st to receive a contract from the state, a service provider must publicly disclose uh, to all its customers accurate information regarding the network and transport management practices and performance and commercial terms of the broadband internet access services sufficient for customers to make informed choices regarding use of such services. 
And since it is an executive order, Steve Bullock kind of wrote it out, and it's kind of part of the state. So that's that. Um, and this is usually for, like, companies who want to move into the state of Montana and be like, oh, we're going to do our company here. And, and then it's like, okay, you got to follow net neutrality. It's like, well, the U.S. isn't doing it. Well, you're in Montana now, son. Anyways, let's move on to another story, which has nothing to do with uh, net neutrality. Um, our thoughts and prayers go out to the victims of yet another high school shooting, uh, another school shooting. Uh, this time, former uh, student poli- uh, um, Nicholas Cruz, according to police, arrived at the majority Stoneman Douglas High School, armed with an AR-15 rifle and countless magazines of ammunition. He began his shooting rampage outside the school and then moved inside, killing 17 students and staff members. At the Pine Trails Park Amphitheater last night, a vigil was held. Some some people in the crowd erupted into a chant of no more guns. Parkland uh, City Commissioner Grace Solomon told the crowd that she planned on going to the state capitol, Tallahassee, next week and invite others to join her for, to uh, press for action on guns. And you can learn more about this and more information on npr.org. You can also go to the Helena Independent Report.com, which is Helena IR. Dot com, but you can also go to Missoulian.com to find out more information about other things that are happening in and around the uh, state of, of Montana and more. Uh, of course, uh, last night, um, um, it was Charter Day, so the University of Montana celebrated 125 years of existence. Uh, Seth Bodner was there, and of course, uh, if you read in the Missoulian today, is he was blessed by 106-year-old uh, um, UM alumni, uh, so it's pretty interesting to see... <laughs> The dynamics of people. So, anyways, um, let let's move on. Uh, I got uh, an art clip for you guys, and this art clip is a brand new art clip featuring at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Oh no, it's Clay Studio of Montana. No, it's I think it's Missoula. I'm pretty sure because it's in Missoula, so it must be the Clay Studio of Missoula. So, anyways, um, <laughs> here's a new art clip which will be ending next Friday and uh, first Friday of this month. I talked about the International Cups where they uh, basically um, have a big uh, event where they invite people to uh, design cups and have it on their display at the uh, Clay Studio. So, without further ado, here is kind of a, rep- a nice little representation by our very own Rick Phillips. And when we come back, we will talk about some movies that are coming out. So, stay with me. Hey guys, welcome back, and now it's time to start um, ripping into some movies that are coming out this week, starting with Black Panther. Um, So, from the studio that brought you such gems and Marvel movies and the new Star Wars movies, and I'm talking about Disney, um, comes Black Panther World Police. And this troop tropes of every social society, every... Okay, so any... Okay, so here's the tropes. So in every society, um, black men always get theirs before women which include uh, voting, the president, and and Marvel movies. The only thing, I, I honestly got to give props to DC for letting uh, uh, the women do that beforehand. So anyways, don't claim that this is the first black leading comic book movie because Blade. Hey guys, Blade came out, and people always forget about Blade. But of course, after the third movie, you want to forget about Blade. But anyways, uh, this movie is about a king of a country uh, that is uh, inhabited 
by multiple tribes, and it's a highly advanced society in Africa. So it's, uh, anyways, I from what I saw from the trailer, it's very like Hamlet-like. Um, about a king who dies and this uh, prince who must inherit the throne. So it's basically, is it Lion King? Well, it is Disney, so it could be just another Lion King. Anyway, so that movie's coming out today. Uh, pfft, but you know, it's 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 weird because it's like it's. I think it's like promoting dictatorships. <laughs> Here's Early Man. Do you like Chicken Run and Wallace and Gromit? You're going to tolerate this movie called Early Man, a story about a tribe of white British folk who battle an army whose tech has evolved to the Bronze Age. Harold Ramis kind of did this in year one, but we're back at it again with human-looking clay monsters with eyes bigger than their heads. Watch a bunch of these large marges play soccer to fight against an industrial fusion. No, trust me. The whole idea is that they make a bet with the leader saying that if we beat you at soccer, we can, I guess, retain our home. So it's basically about big corporations trying to fight the little guy. Yeah, that's that's kind of like the trope of this movie. So it, let's move on. Uh, it's about a strong guy who gets magical strength by our dear lord baby Jeebus and fights sinners and lets women take advantage of him and loses his powers and gets tortured like pretty much everyone in the Bible because the Bible is about how people get, how people keep the faith, uh, suffer the most. Jesus died. He, uh, he was the strongest believer because he was also the son of God. Samson got great strength from his hair, but sh uh, shouldn't cut it. Of course, they end up cutting it. Nowadays, a uh, long hair is a, uh, has the power from getting jobs. <laughs> but of course, if you, uh, anyways, watch this movie as you see Hollywood take advantage of Christians. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. I, I, this is like probably like literally the worst pre-critic ever. But you can expect most of what you can think of from these movies if you've read the Bible. It's pretty long, um, <laughs> and you know the Sam story of Samson. And that pretty much concludes pre-critic. Before I put my foot even further in my mouth, so. Here is another wonderful new programs airing on MCAT, probably much more better, much more better. Yes, I said that. Much more better than um, hashtag much more better than uh, my show. So he, watch these um, amazing programs. They're going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'll talk about all your city council um, committee meetings after this. The Chinese think their socialism with Chinese characteristics is superior to ours. I remember talking to a state counselor, this young teacher. He's a top foreign policy guy in China. He explained to me, he said, no, we are socialist. It is so superior to your democracy. We are the role model for, for developing countries, not democracies. Look how far we've come in China the last 30 years. 
how much our country has grown and developed. Never could have happened in a democracy. No way. Impossible. And he's probably right, frankly. <laughs> um, and it's, but it's not to say it's the right thing to do, but that's, he's probably right in terms of development. And, um, and they think they, their, their selection process for their leaders is far superior to ours. Um, because their leadership has been tested, it's peer reviewed. They've been you know, through all these different stages. And so the party kind of knows who they can trust and not trust, who's smart, who's not smart, who's got the experience and who doesn't, and so forth. It was, it's, it's developed through the years vis-a-vis -vis through probably um, other influences, maybe talking about non-academic situations or um, even contemporary dance, that movement really became something more of a focus. And I was very happy to see that in the descriptions of what people do um, and their professionally. Um, so historically, Merritt, um, are there either practitioners, uh, times in history? What do you look at um, for inspiration? Yeah. Well, Galileo was a good example. But um, Einstein, for me, I'm such a fan girl of Einstein, but because he, I mean, when he discovered special relativity, right? Like he didn't go to the equations of like, you know, the gradient of the electric field equals like the derivative of the magnetic field, right? Like he, what he imagined was he visualized himself. He went to the movement of the physics and he went, oh, okay, what is it like to be a light particle going like through space and try to visualize being an electromagnetic wave? And that's how he, came up with special relativity. And later on, he admits that he then had to, he knew he was right, intuitively he knew he was right, but then he went and proved it mathematically so that he could get his colleagues to understand it. Um, we, we think that reentry and especially the efforts here in Missoula are very important to ensuring that we are reducing crime throughout Montana. I'm gonna pick on Amy just a little bit of, on a couple of nuances with statistics. Um, one is the low risk offenders, um, and I know that came from the Pew report. Uh, that low risk was determined based on institutional risk and not on risk to, um, <coughs> to engage in criminal behavior in the community. Um, so just to keep that in mind. Um, so we are, although we are sometimes incarcerating individuals who do pose a low risk for cr future criminal behavior in Montana, um, they may not, the institutional risk may not equate to risk to creating more victims in the community. Our biggest focus right now at the Department of Corrections is making sure that we're taking a data-driven approach. Hey guys, welcome back. And now it's time for some city council. We're starting off with the Committee of the Whole meeting where they're talking about the water utility known as Missoula Water, formerly known as Mountain Water Company. And we got Dale Bickle, we got Tasha Jones, we got uh, Star Sullivan, and we got the uh, current and new superintendent, um, Dennis Bowman, talking all about what we can expect for the transition of the Missoula Water Company. So without further ado, let's kick things off with a nice uh, um, update from Dennis Bowman. He talk, he's just kind of giving a brief little uh, overview of the uh, Missoula Water. Um, a lot of times people just turn on the water and they think it's great or the fire department goes out and uses the hydrant it's great there's not much to it it's reliable it's always there um, there's a lot of stuff to go with it um, we have air release valves 221 there's 724 blow-offs 1448 hydrants system valves 5972 booster pumps um, 54 of them 39 wells there's actually 41 but there's there's we have currently there's four that are inactive because of um, the previous owner's decision not to do any maintenance on them so um, storage facilities 24 pressure zones 43 PRVs 32 um, kind of the over the overview of the um, how the operation is um, public works director John Wilson's on the top on the left we have the utility project engineering department which is the utility engineer um, project manager and, and an engineering tech they do a lot of interaction with the developers and also work with our um, consultants for replacing mains and doing capital improvements in the system. So it's been very beneficial. Okay, and then of course on the right is the superintendent, which is Dennis uh, Bowman, who is talking, whose voice you can hear, is talking about his duties as administrator and also the guy to go to for the city 
He's the guy who's going to be coming to the city of Missoula to talk about uh, upcoming projects, what kind of development's being done for uh, neighborhoods that are installing uh, water mains and whatnot. So this is uh, going to be, a, since it is uh, now a, a public utility, it's going to—they're going to have uh, this during like public works. So. But since this is an update, this is through the committee of the whole meeting. Of course, just to run down on the system in use and place, you can watch the full update because there's just a lot of slides and a lot of things. I just kind of want to get through the whole uh, the 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 beef of it and just kind of get into uh, the uh, the the nice little um, trimmings, I guess. I don't know. That's stupid. Okay, Dennis goes on to talk about the uh, some of the pumps and the issues with the uh, starting generators. So here he is once again. Because you get a demand charge when you start a well, like Maurice Well over by the university, there's a $3,000 demand charge from Northwest Energy for just, even if you just start the well up for two minutes. And so they looked at that and said, well, wait a minute, we can save on the power, we can do the generator. Um, we tried it over at uh, Maurice and that went to start it up, the batteries are dead. So we went through, changed all the batteries got all the maintenance done. There was a couple of radiators that were leaking. They got that done. So um, we had a power outage for about an eight, hour day, eight hours one day in East Missoula. No problems at all. The generator started out there. No, everybody had water. Everybody had fire protection. You know, everything worked perfect. And that's due to the fact of um, production department. All right, so that was kind of uh, just a nice little story about how uh, um, how they kept the system working even after the power outage in East Missoula. Uh, it seems pretty disturbing to think uh, that we had uh, to still pay legal fees long after the trials. Um, Missoula won a huge asset, but getting there was really rough. Uh, of course, also the asset is pretty sweet deal for Missoula since it is another source of income that goes into the city and the infrastructure of replacing all the water mains and pipes that need to be replaced because one of the biggest things that they put a, a case against um, Mountain Water Company and the Carlisle Group was they said they were going to replace water mains, but they didn't. They basically just ran the company, and then they sold it. They actually did sell it to Liberty Mutual. Did not Liberty Mutual, <laughs> Liberty from Canada. So um, the money, of course, will not be used for anything but the water utility related. So Dennis Bowman explains the biggest difference in main extension when developing a site. It, when, uh, of course, it was called um, developer's extension agreement. So that's... Uh, Fancy word of paying more money and interest over time for uh, water main installation. So this is kind of like the difference between how the, pu the, the public utility is going to run versus how the private uh, utility was running. In May and June of last year, we settled with Liberty. All right, hold on one second. That is the wrong quote. Um... Okay, here it is. <laughs> Sorry about that. The city would develop a, the developer would come in and say, I want to build this subdivision or I need to extend the main out to my project. The city would estimate the cost of design and construction and the developer would pay that, excuse me, the utility, the developer would pay that to Mountain Water and the Mountain Water would hire the engineers, contractors and manage the project. And then Mountain Water would re reimburse the developer over 40 years for all of that cost. And I understand that the reason for that was so that Mountain Water could capitalize the, uh, the system, the improvements, and then that would go into the rate base. Uh, that's just not how we do things in the public utility. And so uh, what we want to do is, is, and if we believe it needs to be adopted because it was in the initial ordinance that created the utility uh, by the city, we need to change that, uh, come to you and get an ordinance amendment that will uh, establish the uh, policy that the developer will hire their own engineers and their own contractors and do that work and it will all be performed under our specifications and standards and we will approve it before we take possession but it will shift from the, the financing coming to the city and the work being performed by the city to the developer doing that directly. Okay. Alright so basically what he's saying is if you want to build a neighborhood here in Missoula that you have to uh, ha put a water main extension that you pay for for the houses and you have to follow the regulations of the Miss Missoula Water Company. So um, let's move on to our next thing. And this is the last quote that we got here. And of course, uh, it's very interesting to just kind of see that those 40 years of interest sounds pretty good for the private sector. So when building a home, you got to pay uh, for a water hookup up front. And... Uh, 
But of course, one of the things that they were talking about is that 23,000 customers in the city of Missoula have a flat rate when it comes to water and are unmetered. Uh, Helena, they switched that a couple of years ago um, where they're all metered just to kind of keep up and just make sure that everyone's using an appropriate amount of water and how much money water is being used. So it, the whole idea of flat rate is that basically you, you pay a, a basic rate every month to um, basically uh, have as much water as you want. And then, of course, the media thing is it's where it's more regulated, but at the same time, if you use less water, you pay less. That's kind of like the more of the incent incentive to have it. And also with the metered um, water, they also say that um, the Missoula Water Company and uh, the city of Missoula also say that um, with the metered water, you can also have the lower rates during like the winter time when you're not watering your lawn or whatnot and have that as a credit to be put into your summer so you don't have to pay as much during the summer where you can still retain paying a, still a, a, an average amount. So it's basically coming up with a, a mean average for all that stuff. So anyways, here's Gwen Jones reflects and praises um, Dennis Bowman for his, uh, his work he's done for the uh, Missoula Water Company. No news is good news, so people are like, yeah, whatever, it happened. No, this was huge to have a smooth transition, and you were talking about some of the challenges you face today, um, but I think we all need to be especially uh, thankful to Mr. Bowman for his leadership in stepping up and his work ethic. Because of him, we had a smooth transition, which was the first primary goal, because you need water every minute of every day so thank you so much for that yeah i echo that um and i we're gonna all right so um that was gwen jones uh praising um dennis bowman for his uh, hard work this was an update and we'll have more on this t uh topic later on as it goes on so um public safety and health had a meeting today as well there weren't too many meetings today so i'm just going to kind of give you the brief um relationship violence services stopped by to talk about crime victim advocates and many organizations that help uh, domestic violent um, victims and more in places uh, that help uh, people. So sorry about that. I, I, I worded it. Uh, I worded it and then I said it and that was completely different. So without further ado, here's the folks from crime victim Ad advocates talking about this update through public safety and health. And over time, it has grown significantly for a variety of reasons. Some of those reasons are we got smarter about how to do this work, um, and some of those reasons are lots more people started showing up at our door. So some of the big innovations in doing this work uh, included things like uh, in implementing a coordinated community response. So that means getting your law enforcement and prosecutors and judges and advocates and mental health providers to talk together and work collectively on how to improve the system response to sexual and domestic violence and stalking. And then um, uh, another big innovation was looking at primary prevention. So for a long time, prevention meant going to schools and telling kids what red flags of domestic violence might be. That's not really primary prevention. That's really awareness. Primary prevention is how do you build healthy relationships from the get-go? How do you prevent violence from ever happening? So prevention has really changed over the years. Um, and then in terms of uh, what we need in Missoula County, our rural areas were, um, you know, we live in a huge county where communities are very far and sometimes those roads are very hard to travel. And then we're neighbored by some very, very small counties. And um, there's a funding opportunity in particular through the Office of Violence Against Women called the Rural Grant and it only funds rural areas. And over the years we have successfully competed for that grant and partner with Mineral County to get services and prevention out to those rural communities. So we partner with Mineral County and work a lot up in Sealy Lake with that project. All right, so um, just kind of give you, that's basically the update on where they are, where they're going. Um, there's more details in this meeting as well. The problem uh, that they kind of face and they cut, they have to work with a along the way of this is that there's a circle of, of confusion, especially when it comes to drug and violence, when these situations are put into place. Because when you have a domestic violence situation and you add drugs and alcohol into the situation, it gets even worse. And there, it's, it's kind of like a less protection idea so that so a lot of times uh, drug rehab places require that you have a safe home environment if you plan on trying to kick the habits but if you come from a domestic violence place you really can't do that so then you go to the uh, um, the, the the domestic violent places then they say is like okay you have to get off those drugs and and it's like what 
So it's like it's it's a circle of where you go back and forth, and and it's like you need to get off those drugs. Like I I okay I try to go to rehab, and there's like I need a safe environment, but I can't get a safe environment. So it's, so that's kind of the cycle. That's the co confusion that they have here. So there's. Uh, but of course, according to CVA, the crime victim advocates, they will not turn anyone away regardless of their situation is, which include drug and alcohol abuse. And if they cannot directly help you, they will not turn you away until they have you have a safe and uh, until they provide some form of help and safety towards you and th those in your life. Um, there's, th of course, there is a bias when it comes to folks who are in domestic violence situations and there are when they are addicted to drugs. Of uh, kind of like the saying, um, of course, you've probably heard this many times before: is she was asking for it um, since she was drunk or wasted. Of course, relationship violence services, they talk about marriage versus non-marriage back in the day in terms of violence and what was appropriate. Kind of in a reverse way, one of the issues that, again, was overcome years ago was it had been that it was not illegal for a husband to rape his wife. And marital rape happened with great frequency and there was no recourse for it. So um, that was something that actually Senator Sands was able to push years and years ago. but. You know, it, it's changes like that that have happened, and the field has really evolved over the last 40 years in particular. Um, so that is something that has changed. Good. I'd like to hear that there's a quality in that matter. Okay. All right. So um, moving on to uh, another section, one of the things that were discussed in this meeting is that uh, since this week was uh, Murdered Indigenous Women's Day, they asked what kind of outreach is in play to help these women in rural and um, communities that are uh, on the reservation and uh, this is what they responded to and talked about how they tried and failed um, with these programs. All staff who were paid to go to meetings and there were a lot of folks who were community volunteers who were coming who were not paid to come to those meetings and there's it's hard to expect somebody who's making time to do it to be able to have the same energy and resources for it over time and and then one of the other components around this is um, that it's not just about funding, it's about sustained funding for everybody. So it's, it, the effort oftentimes needs a facilitator who can dedicate real time and energy to it and going out to coffee, 100 cups of coffee and making deeper relationships. And then also, just because you've built the relationships, you need to make sure that those services are meeting needs. So how are you training each generation of workers. So we did put in a lot of training. There were seven years of conferences that brought in folks from uh, across the state and focused on things like historical trauma and the best practices in serving Native families. Lots of those workers are gone now. And so it's, it's an ongoing need to keep up that training. It's not like you just hold one conference and you're done. So that is the situation that's going on right now in some of those communities. Um, Jenny Daniel, uh, Crime Victim Advocates, talks about how they help uh, law enforcement in terms of training and uh, figuring out uh, what to look for in domestic violence situations. One of the other pieces that happened was we worked really hard at um, <coughs> identifying some values that we as a system were, we cared about. Um, and the, the values that we came up with are um, assume goodwill, uh, have honest communication, work collaboratively, uh, be victim-centered and victim-focused, um, holding offenders accountable, being adaptive and being self-analyzing, so really being responsive to the needs of the system. So I, real time would be the advocate at the CVA. She's reviewing patrol cases and she starts noticing a trend. She can come talk to me and you know I might check in with law enforcement leaders and say is this something you're noticing and then I can help get training to those people. Um, maybe it's that I work with law enforcement to get that specific training. Lots of times I'm able to offer, especially right now we have awesome webinars that, that are free online training that I can say, hey, there's this webinar and I invite everybody on the team, all, all the, the, even if they're a CPS, and they can all come if they have time to attend any of the trainings. So that's one of my, um, my roles, I guess. Uh, this year I, I did 14 trainings um, and uh, you know from a multidisciplinary group I will I will go to CPS as an example if you know they need some 
there's a special webinar training focused on that, then I might go to their office and show it. But All right, so um, once again, that was uh, Jenny Daniels from CVA talking about how they help um, by training people to um, look for signs, look for uh, how you can help the victims of um, violence as well. Um, she also talks about how MCAT can get involved for any uh, future um, um, projects in terms of getting the word and training out there as well. So here is Jenny Daniels once again. And so part of it is really building up our uh, our base as far as speakers go. Um, we have uh, an ACES presenter and she recently retired but we've got her back you know so we're working on that. I um, One of the suggestions when I brought this up at, at um, the commissioners meeting they talked about getting MCAT to come in and so it's possible that we could get MCAT to come in that's my next kind of goal and then have them film the whole thing and then if somebody's gone maybe not Brad but if someone's gone then we can play their chunk you know and we do have a few videos that are sort of um, out there like on YouTube that we've been able to use in place of speaking all right, so um, like she said, we do have a video that is in place that I do want to show you guys when I transition to my next uh, um, part of my show where I talk about events in the city of Missoula. Um, and I think it is a really... If you're still struck... Oh, wait, hold on one second. Uh, <laughs> I hate YouTube because it has this autoplay function as well. So, um, so just so you guys know... Um, MCAT is always down to help any community members and civic groups to here in the city of Missoula. Oh, we offer a lot of uh, training and uh, other things to help people help themselves as well. So if you go to MCAT.org, you can find out more information about that. You can go to How Do I Request Event Recording. You can submit a program. And, of course, you can always submit uh, 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 be part of our Spring Flix Camp for Kids. So we are offering a uh, camp for the kids for spring break. Um, just a uh, nice little, uh, quick little advertisement. But I also want you guys to know that uh, you can find me on wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Uh, thus concludes the city council meeting. Um, if you want to find out these meetings and more, all you got to do is go to ci.missoula.mt.us. So without further ado, here is a, uh, uh, a video about consent. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my god, yes, I would love a cup of tea, thank you. Then you know they want a cup of tea. Oh my god. If you say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Uh, then you could make him a cup of tea. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was, uh, that was, uh, that, that was not good. That was definitely not good with the, uh, I mean, it's a good about consent video, but it's not good to air on our channel. Whew, that was a little soggy. Sorry, Lori. Sorry. I'm really, I'm extra. <laughs> that was just really bad. I, I feel really horrible about just that in general. So I will fix that in post, um, hopefully later. So you only get to see that live <laughs> this morning if you're watching that. So I apologize for the foul language, but that is a, a, a video about consent. So you look up T consent to find more information. That is definitely something I should have done before I showed that video is definitely uh, watch it. <laughs> so bad. All right, guys. Well, let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula. Um, kicking things off with... Mismo, Misa, and Roots. So those are indoor uh, sports, acro, uh, fun activities for kids who are wa from birth to walking so they can do some tumbles and get familiar with their bodies in forms of gymnastics and a safe, fun, foam-fitted area for everybody. Motorsports show is happening at the Southgate Mall starting starting today from 10 a.m. to about 6 p.m. And it's going to be at the Southgate Mall. Get your uh, adrenaline pump in and see the hottest motorcycles, boats, ATVs, side-by-sides, snowmobile, and display at Southgate Mall. Missoula Rights 10th Annual Writing Contest is at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10 a.m. this morning. Participants that would like to be considered for the contest should submit their original work by visiting missoulapubliclibrary.submittables.com slash submit. So you can also find out more information if you go to Missoula Public Library and they'll probably have a link. So Missoula publiclibrary.org. Um, cash prizes will be awarded to 36 winners, three for fiction, three for nonfiction, and three for poetry. And these are each of the age groups, 8 to 10, 11 to 14, 
15 to 18, and 19. So 19 is its own category. First place winners are $100, second 50, and the third place winners win $25. So you can um, find out more information if you call them at 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And of course, if you want to stick around for Tiny Tales or Family Story Time, Kids age birth to five years of age can do some Tiny Tales and some story time. Uh, they need uh, accompanied by an adult lap, and you get to learn some uh, nine new words a day. And it's a wonderful program to uh, let kids learn to read and um, get familiar with the fun books of the Missoula Public Library. Um, if you're interested in watercolor or doing some stitching and crocheting, uh, yarns and watercolor is at the Public Library starting at 12. Um, you sh they always ask that you RSVP and um, uh, try to sign up beforehand. They have this usually weekly. Hopefully, you'll be able to drop in, but you can always call them at 721 Two six six five for more information. Cribbage and Bridge starts at 12.30ish at the Missoula Senior Center, so if you're interested in playing Cribbage or Bridge, you can have the choice between the two. Um, Teen Writers Group is happening from 3.30 to 5 at the Missoula Public Library, and that is a fun way to uh, improve your writing skills at the Missoula Public Library. So there's just a lot of things happening at the Missoula Public Library, but here are a lot of things that are happening pretty much a lot all around the downtown Missoula area at MCT. Hercules with MCT. Olympians come need the call, heed the call, sorry, rings out the opening number for the Missoula Children's Theater's newest musical, Hercules. Just in time for the New Year's Olympic Games, Hercules tells the tale of Olympic Olympics in ancient Greece. The show will take place February 16th at 5.30 p.m. and 7 p.m. Saturday, February 17th at 3 and 5 p.m. at the MCT Center for Performing Arts. The character Hercules is known for his superhuman strength, but is that quality really what makes him a hero? In fact, that's the inspiration for playwright and executive director Michael McGill's original version of plays. I know I have known a lot of people in my some of them children and I admire for qualities that seem very heroic, but it never involved the strength of their arms. Ghost Date Night at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Clay Studio of Missoula is hosting a, a ghost night, so if you're not there just to see their International Cups uh, gallery show, you can go to Ghost Night. So if you have a date, you can do that ghost thing where like you know you play with the clay and get all messy. It's gonna be fun. They'll have uh, pizza. Um, a wheel zone, I guess, and the events will be round out with an option, optional couples throwing competition with prizes. And it's, of course, it's BYOB. The Clay Studio will provide sweet treats and non-alcoholic drinks, and plenty of atmosphere. Space is limited, so reserve your spot today. It's forty dollars for a couple, uh, fifty dollars for a couple if you're not a member of the Clay Studio of Missoula. You can call that five four three zero five zero nine to reserve a spot today. And if you are a uh, family person and you want to enjoy some drink specials and you want to bring your family along, you can go to Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat Lounge from 6 to 9 p.m. tonight. Um, you know, you hang out at the Top Hat, enjoy some company, have some dinner, and they have some drink specials. Uh, it's a Family Friendly Friday. Um, Planetarium show at the University of Montana. This is at 6.30 and 8.30, 8, 8 p.m., sorry, 6.30 and 8 p.m. Um, the second showing of the session, Dr. Reisenfeld, will take you on a great journey during Secret of the Milky Way. Tickets are $6 for adults, $4 for children, 12 and under. Tickets are not sold at the door, and you can see their website for more information. So go to umt.edu for more information about that and more. Uh, Dark Money is pre premiering, like I said, at the uh, at the Wilma Theater at 7 p.m. tonight. Uh, tickets after the city Citizen United ruling dark money floods elections nationwide, but Montanans are standing up to stop history from repeating itself in a struggle that has been potential to change the way elections happen nationwide. And that kind of concludes that. I have another art clip for you guys, and it will con it will uh, include um, some of the stuff that are happening at the Gallery of the Visual Arts, which ends today. So I'm going to go apologize <laughs> to Lori, and I'll be right back after this.
All right, welcome back. Let's talk about some Saturday events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. So kicking things off for your Saturday is you got Winter Market from 9 to 1 p.m. If you want that uh, uh, Farmer's Market fix, um, then you can go to the Winter Market at the Missoula Senior Center from 9 to 1 p.m. to get all your uh, frozen meats, elk meats, and all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, uh, but be sure that they have a permit to sell those. So, uh, Big Sky Dark Green Film Festival kicks off this weekend at the Roxy, MCT, and Elks Lodge. Um, it's going to be all over the place. You can check it out if you go to BigSkyFilmFest.org. Celebrity appraisal event at the Missoula Art Museum. You are invited to celebrate an appraisal of event at the MAM. Um, for, join us for a day of dazzling and discovery with Missoula's own world world-renowned art and rare object appraiser Timothy Gordon of Timothy Gordon Appraisals and uh, Grant Jacaro of uh, Jaharco Auctions. You're invited to bring your fine art, decorative works, or rare artifacts to MAM for on-the-spot appraisals by Gordon and Jaharco. So, sorry, I'm totally butchering that name. Third-generation auctioneer Jaharco has spent over 25 years specializing in memorabilia, um, autographs, um, documents, antiques, and more, and has several has served as antique roach hose collect collectibles and sports memorabilia appraiser for the past six seasons of of that one show. Um, what was it called again? Um, antiques Road Show. So, Antiques Road Show is a show. If you if you know this show, then he he acts as the uh, appraiser. I'm not sure if he's on camera or not. So, um, this is a celebrity appraisal event happening at 10:30 a.m. at the Missoula, uh, at the Missoula Art Museum. It goes for four hours. And it's twenty dollars per object. You can't just bring your object and be like, "Here, appraise it." Just make sure that when you bring your object, it's twenty dollars per object. So they spend the appropriate amount of time in checking it out and everything like that. So there's always a price. Um, Winter Carnival at the Church at the Gates. Indoor Carnival, bounce house, face paint, free food, hot dogs, popcorn, and more, cotton candy, and so much more. There's a lot of ands. Um, Church at the Gates. And it happens from twelve p.m. to four p.m. and it's five dollars per family. That's a pretty good deal. But there's also an even better deal. You can drop your kids off and you won't have to be with your kids um, from 1 to 5 p.m. at MCAT for our Animation Saturday drop-ins. And it happens from 1 to 5 every single Saturday. Winter Games Tri-Day. Glacier Ice Rink is... Are you feeling inspired by the Winter Games? Come to the Glacier Ice Rink on February 17th and try some of the ice sports you've been watching for free. The outside rink will be open from... Six, 2 to 6 p.m. for curling and inside rink will host alternative sessions in skating and hockey. Hockey slash figure skates and limited amount of hockey equipment are available for the use of free of charge. And you can go to GlacierIceRink.com for more information. So curling is really fun to watch and pretty much if you can play it well enough, you can join the U.S. Olympics team. So it's it's one of those sports that don't require you to uh, basically uh, go on a 5, 10K run every day for four years. <laughs> so Winter Brew Fest is happening at Karis Park because it is the season. And why not freeze your butt off outside at Karis Park from 3 to 9 p.m. and have some beer in open containers where are lawful. So a hot bar with a hot toddies and no alcoholic coffee, uh, a non-alcoholic coffee and hot cocoa, kids activities, DJs keep the party going all night long, and it's Winter Brew Fest. So come drink and freeze to death. Ninja Night. Ms. Gymnastic is hosting a uh, uh, ninja Night, and it has your kids ever wanted to be ninja, bring them to Mismo Gymnastics for the Ninja Night. I, I just really thought this was cool. They always have like a theme night there and whatnot, but I think this one is particularly cool. They're able to climb, swing, walk, cross, and jump all over the place. The Ninja staff members are so excited to see you. <laughs> and it's happening tomorrow night from 6 to 9 p.m. for ages 4 to 11. $20 for members, $25 for non-members. And I have one more Sunday. Um, and this is Prose and Poetry of Bonner and the Lower Blackfoot. The Bonner Milltown History Roundtable is hosting a uh, capturing the imagination of writers and recognize the unique nature of the area. Roundtable features excerpts from Mary Weather Lewis, Richard Hugo, Paul Janinski, um, John H. Toole, uh, Norman McLean, Norman McLean, sorry, um, Michael Mo Moon, um, Anik Smith and others. Ooh, I wonder who the others are. Not to mention more and more documentaries this weekend leading into the week of Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. So if you guys are planning on going out and about tonight, tonight what might be a good night to go to the Badlander for some um, kind of music. So it's a club. Um, you got some um, 
I guess uh, rock, heavy rock music at the Dark Horse happening tonight as well. You got Black Wolf Midnight Ramblers. It's going to be documentaries playing at the Roxy Theater starting at 9.15. Uh, Russ Nasset and the Revelators will be at the Union Club, so it's a nice little um, fun little dance band where the old and the young meet to dance. Um, Russ Nasset and the Revelators um, will be there. Uh, Troublesome is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Karaoke is going to be at the VFW. So if you want to, like, um, basically stop listening to some loud music and make some music of your own. Go to VFW. Josh Hoyer and So Colossal will be at the Top Hat Lounge. So if you want to learn more about me and my wonderful morning show, you can go to MCAT. Uh, you, <laughs> you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can also go to mcat.org to find out more information about our spring camp that I will be offering to kids. Um, we'll be po posting up our summer camp um Days coming up pretty soon, so um, be be aware that uh, our summer camps will be starting up in the end of June and ba basically hit all of July. So, kind of stay with us there. Um, we'll I'll tell you when I'll be posting that, but be sure we are offering kids nine to fourteen years of age a wonderful spring camp. So if you don't want your kids to sit around all spring time and they want to have a fun time experiencing some stop animation, movie making, and just some all around fun. They can do some spring flicks, and it's a good way. So just because the kids are out for the whole school week doesn't mean that you are. And it's a good way to uh, have your kids just kind of hang out here, and it's $150 for a whole week. So that's basically an average of about $30 a day for seven hours, seven, eight hours that day. So it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning, um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Um, be sure to uh, check out more of my content and more. Uh, hopefully, I'll be bringing back Flagship Friday by next week because this is the first week of Flagship, and MCAT ha are, is doing four Flagship program after school programs each day from Tuesday through Friday. Um, so let's uh, let's have a good night and let's have a good day. It's Documentary Film Festival Day week and more, and you can find out more information about that by going to BigSkyFilmFest.com. MCAT.org, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So thank you for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. <laughs>